Hey guys, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial. And I know it's been a while since my last tutorial. I'm just pretty busy uh, right now. I'm going to try to get out at least one tutorial every week. And today I'm going to show you how to create a comic book effect inside of Blender. So I just grabbed this picture off the internet because I liked it. You can use whatever picture you want for this effect. And uh, we're going to transform it into this. We're going to create these little dots and get a nice outline around the things inside the picture to create this comic book effect. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is delete the cube and the lamp and then go to top view and orthographic view. And you're going to make sure you have an add-on enabled. So go to user preferences, add-ons, import export. And you want to make sure that you have the import images as planes checked and then click save user settings and now if you press shift a mesh there's an option down here to add images as planes so I'm gonna select that and import my picture and then I'm just gonna scale it up by pressing S and then 5 and I'm just gonna set the material to shadeless and go to texture view now I'll press Control alt 0 to snap the camera to view and I'll select it and press the G middle mouse button to zoom out. And you can see that our picture isn't the same dimensions as our camera. So we're going to have to render this image out in our scene with a different resolution. Otherwise when we go into the compositor to create the effect, uh, the scaling is all going to be wrong. So if you scale it up or zoom the camera out to about there, that's good. We'll go to the render settings and play with the resolution until we get something like that. And I think that's good. So we'll just leave it there. And now what we're going to do is select the plane and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. Right click and then press M and click the second layer. And then we'll go to the second layer. And we're going to use this plane to create the dots for our copy, our comic book effect. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode. And we want to cut this up into equal squares first. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut, about three like that. Then Control R in the middle. And that looks sort of like even squares. So now we'll subdivide it by pressing W, subdivide. Bring it up to 10. And then subdivide again, and then subdivide one more time, but change the cuts to two, like that. Now we're going to add an icosphere, shift A, mesh, icosphere, we'll move this out of the way, whoops, never mind, delete it, shift A, mesh, icosphere, and we're going to set the subdivisions down to one first, and then move it out. And I'll press Control 2, which is this shortcut for adding a level 2 subdivision surface modifier. And I'll set the shading to smooth. And then we're going to hide the modifier from the viewport so that when we add the particles here, it doesn't slow down. And the material we want to give this is a pure white color. And we're going to change it, or make sure shadeless is selected. Then we'll select our plane, go to the particle settings add a new one, set the end frame to 1, check emit from verts, uncheck random, scroll down, uncheck emitter, click on object and select the icosphere that we added. We're going to bring the size down to 0.1 and you can see that there's not enough dots right now. We want to have like a grid of dots and to do that, we want to emit a uh, icosphere at every single vertice. So if you look up here, or tab in edit mode first and look up here, you can see how many vertices there are. There's 3,545. So we'll just type that into the number here 3,545. And then press enter and tab out edit mode. And if we go into a wireframe view, you can see that our it looks like a grid. But I can see right here that there's a particle missing and one's missing here. 
So I think if we just increase it by two, it'll fill those spots. So that's looking good. I'm going to change the background color to black really quickly. And then we're going to go to the third layer and add a plane. And I'll tab into edit mode, press W, merge at center. We're going to move this to the top left corner. Press E and move it to the bottom right corner. Select everything and press E. Whoops. E. And drag it out of the camera's view like that. And then I'm just going to move this back a little bit while in object mode. We're going to give this a red color. And make sure the material is shadeless. And then we'll duplicate this plane. Scale it up like that and move it. And then go to front view and move it below the red plane, like that. And we're going to press this 2 button here to create a new material. And we want to make this plane a dark green, like that. And I'm just going to select all three layers right now. And we're going to create a different render layer for each of these. The first one we'll call it image. And make sure only the first layer is selected. second one will be dots and we'll make sure the second one's selected and last one will be gradient and you'll see why we need this later okay and now I'm just going to render out the entire scene while everything is selected and okay now we'll jump over to the compositor click use nodes backdrop control up arrow to make it full screen and I'm just going to drag these out Press Control Shift and left click to add a viewer node. And I'll duplicate these render layer nodes two more times and switch it to dots and gradient, like that. Now, what we want to do is create an outline for the image around all of these people. And it's the same method I used in my stylize effect video. And if you want, you can check that out. But I'll show you how to do it right here. It's pretty simple. We're going to press Shift A, Filter, Filter, and switch it to Sobel, and then Shift A, Converter, RGB to black and white, then Shift A, Color, Invert, and Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. And now we want to adjust the markers on this color ramp to play around with the outlines here. So we're going to drag up this black a little bit, add another color marker, and make it a dark gray like that. Just bring that back over here. And these settings aren't mandatory. You, you can play around with these to get whatever you like. And what we're going to do now is add a color mix node, switch it to multiply, and plug in our original image. Whoops. And now you can see that we're getting an outline around all of it and it's starting to look cartoonish, which is what we want. Now what we want to do is, um, I'm just going to move these up. We're going to add a hue saturation value node and bump up the saturation to 1.5. And this will give them a more reddish tint, or because uh, if you look at our comic book effect, uh, you can see that it's really red. And in comic books, the characters tend to be more saturated in color. And to get our dots to appear on our image here, we're going to duplicate the multiply node like that, plug in the dots to the bottom, but we want to make sure the saturation is plugged into the multiply node. And we'll duplicate this hue saturation value node again and set the saturation to 2 this time. Then we'll duplicate the multiply node one more time and plug in the original, the first hue saturation value node. And we'll switch it from multiply to add. And now you can start to see the effect we're getting here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move this node up there and drag all of these back some more and what we want to do now is overlay this reddish green gradient over our scene and I want to blur it out first 
So we'll just press Shift A, Filter, Blur, Fast Gaussian, Relative, Y. And set that to something like 25 by 25. Okay. And then duplicate the add node. Plug in both of the nodes into it. And switch it to overlay. And I think we want to flip these around. No. So make sure the gradient's on the bottom and the original image is on top. We're going to bring this factor down to 0.5. And that just adds a subtle reddish tint to the scene and the green tint there. And you can see it looks pretty good with that tint. So now we'll just plug this into the composite node. And you can stop here if you want. Or you can add a vignette, which I'm going to show you how to do. Press Shift A, Matte, Ellipse Mask. And then this is a pretty cool technique to adding a vignette to any of your scenes. So I'm just going to play with this width value until I get something like that. I'll duplicate this blur node right there. And I'll bring it down to something like 10 by 10 though. Maybe shrink down the edges a little bit. And duplicate a multiply node. And plug in our image. And there you can see we get a nice vignette around our image. And you can just play around with these settings to get more of a black outline or less. It's really up to you. So I'll just plug this into the composite node and render the image. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. Thanks for watching.